Nikki here with Beauty Judor. So I wanted to quickly um, show you a new version of my ME2070. So it's the cropped version. You've probably seen it before. I'll put a picture up here. Um, and it is a cropped version that I've modified the back a bit. So the vent on the back is going to be a bit different than the original, as well as my original cropped version had like the two different like the little breastplate pocket things up at the top. Um, this version that I'm making here is only going to have one. So I'm going to take you to the step-by-step -step process of how I modified it. And I know that sounds in depth, but it's super simple. You don't even need any type of special ruler, just a straight edge. So also this, I won't call it a tutorial. It's more of a modified tutorial. This is for the kids version. So I'm making this one, this cropped version for Chandler. But the only difference in the adult version and the kids version is nothing. It's every single pattern piece is the same. The only difference is just a smaller pattern piece. So another thing, I'm not doing any buttons on this version. So I'm doing no buttons. I'm actually gonna do like a little exposed zipper um, just like a, at the very bottom, just to kind of like close it up a bit. Uh, so no buttons. I'm also removing the epaulets on here. So originally I had done another video, like an intro video, um, but I did make quite a few changes um, as I started the process. So I'm going back and redoing this over. So what else did I do? Um, that is about it. Oh, so on the armbands, what I did and what the pattern states is that you cut four armbands and you put two of them, uh, four and then I think two pieces of interfaces and then you put them together, you sew them and so on and so forth. But with this one, I made them a little smaller, but I extended the pattern by one inch and instead of cutting four pieces, I cut two pieces and then just folded them in half. So it made it smaller. So when you look at the actual uh, process, it's it's smaller. It's a lot smaller. So I think that is it. Oh, the, also the way that I um, constructed the part in the back, um, the band in the back, it is folded in as opposed as opposed to like folded out. And you'll see what I mean when I go through the process. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. So I also put like a little tab across the back. I don't know, I think it's cute. It makes it a little more interesting. So Chandler has been talking about she wants a denim jacket. Now I am in the process of making like a super cool kid gym. Well, it started out being a kid denim jacket and it turned out to be kind of dope for adults, but I'm making her a denim jacket. But I wanted to kind of go through this process because people have asked, how did I do the cropped version of mine? And um, so yes, so that's why I'm doing this. So again, this isn't like a step-by-step -step tutorial. I am going to mention um, in the video where I refer to the original tutorial. The original tutorial will take you step-by-step-by-step -step -step through the entire process. This is just gonna kind of tell you the things that I did and show you the ways that I'm actually modified the pattern. But I think that's it. Um, I think that's it, yeah. So if you have any questions, um, any concerns, just let me know. Happy sewing. Okay, so all the pieces should be cut out just because remember I have made this um, a couple times. And again, this pattern that I am altering is going to be the cropped version, but for kids. So I'm gonna make it a little different than the black one that I have pictured here and the one that you've seen before. So let's go ahead and alter the pattern. And again, there's not many pieces or big alterations that you need to do with the actual pattern. Um, and I know I say this often, but just look at these patterns as just kind of a blueprint. And you can change whatever you want. You can make it as long or as short as you want. So, if you've made this already, then you know, or you should know where you want it cropped, if you want it cropped. If not, what you want to do is go from 
the underarm here down. So kind of place the pattern in front of you and just kind of see where you think you want the length taken off at and how far you want to crop. Keep in mind that you are going to need a little extra for seam allowance as well as uh, when you hem it. So I kind of looked at the one that I made for her before and I think I went down. I did also add on a half an inch and I'm using that as a seam allowance. And so I'm going down 11 because I wanted it around 10 inches or so. So I'm going to cut at the 11th mark. So 11 inches down from right here underneath the arm. So I go over there. I just did a line. I did that one already um, off camera. So I'm not going to cut the pattern. I'm just going to fold it under. So this is going to be the actual whole coat on the front. And all this here is going to be removed. And as you can see here, the pocket placement is going to have to be moved as well. So I think I mentioned before, I'm still on the fence if I'm going to make um, or put pockets. She doesn't want pockets, um, but we'll see. Let's see. Let me grab some pins. And just go ahead and pin this up so that it's out of the way. So this is what I'm using for the front. Let's go ahead to the back. And so what you want to do is you want to put the back and the front together. And then this is going to let you know where you need to cut. And make sure you line up under the armpit here. And then you can kind of see through here and then make sure you have a straight line and then mark that and do the same thing just kind of roll this up to keep it out of the way Now you want to grab the facing and do the same thing. But now you want to line this up with the facing. I'm going to go ahead and pin that. Line up these notches here. your straight edge And you can go ahead and press this. It'll just make it a lot easier and it won't be as bulky, especially when you lay your fabric down.
Okay, so I mentioned that I'm not sure about the pockets yet, um, but in the event that I do, I'm going to figure out where I want my pocket placement. And again, this doesn't, and it's not going to be where you want yours because, you know, everyone's arms are a certain length and what's most comfortable to them, where the pocket placement is, is going to be different for someone else. So you can put it up to you, up to your chest, and then just kind of fill to where you think the pocket placement will be. Now, it is a crop jacket. So to be completely honest, the pockets aren't necessarily to, you know, keep you warm. It is literally for fashion. But of course, they're usable. Um, but because it's cropped, the jacket that holds the pocket, the inside lining of the pocket, is going to be a lot shorter. So you're not going to be able to put a whole lot of stuff in there anyway. So keep that in mind. So where I'm going to place this, this was the original. This is a size 10. So this would be where the original pocket would sit. I'm going to move this one up a bit. I think I'm going to move it over here. And I'm going to do the same dimensions. So in terms of constructing the pocket, refer to the original video and it will take you step by step on how to do a well pocket. But in terms of placement, I'm going to move the pocket. Let's see, because I think I'm going to do just one button here. So we can do the welt probably here because you don't want it too close to the side seam. So I'm gonna put it right here. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Again, I can kind of spot it because I've made the well pocket a thousand times. Um, but what you wanna do is just take, after you kind of sketch it out a bit, put it up to you and see if this is where you think having this wall pocket will be most comfortable. Let's see, and I think that's the only changes, um, well, the front lining and the back lining. We can go ahead and do that now. But again, the only difference is we're just gonna be taking off the length. Uh, where is it? And well, let's mess around with the back overlay. And let's see if we need to adjust this in. So the way I'm going to do the overlay is going to be a little different, um, but in terms of altering the, the pattern, you don't need to do any of that. So we'll keep the overlay the same. It's just that when I put it on the back, I'm gonna put it on a little different. Let's see. So I also am uncertain um, if I'm going to do pockets or I'm sorry, if I'm going to do buttons or if I'm going to do a zipper. So I'll probably just wait for that because Chandler definitely wants a zipper. I don't know why um, because I know she's not even going to use the zipper, but she definitely wants a zipper. So let's just go ahead and do this. We have the sleeve. We don't need to alter anything on the sleeve. We have the epaulette, which is going to go on the shoulders. We're not going to do anything with these. The sleeve tab. Um, probably if I do anything, let's see. I do, I think I'm gonna add an inch on to the sleeve tab. Just so that I don't have to extend this pattern out, I'm just gonna go ahead and mark this one inch. So when I cut it out, I'm just going to add an additional inch on. Let's see, we're not gonna do anything different with the collar. Everything is gonna stay the same. So I am going to do the pockets. 
Um, so once I get to the pocket, because the actual lining of the pocket is going to be a bit different, I will show you the quick change that you need to make when it comes to the pocket. So don't cut out yet your pocket lining. Yeah, don't cut that out just because it's going to have to be a bit shorter. And of course, this is the belt that you will not need. All right, so go ahead and cut the pieces out. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. I think that should be it. If there's any other changes that I can think of as I'm going through this, I'll pop in and let you know. But I'm going to go ahead and cut my pattern pieces out. And I'm using this denim. And it's just some leftover denim that I had. It's actually the denim that I used um, for my jeans. So yeah, so hopefully she likes this color. I don't know if I'm gonna use this side or this side. I'm not sure yet. But anyway, be right back. Okay, so in terms of the welt pocket, I, I had Chandler I had uh, her put this up to her just to kind of see where it's comfortable for her. Um, so she did want her pocket changed. So I moved it up a bit. And now what you want to do is take the pocket piece and the pocket facing. And you want to just put it here. Kind of pin it. And you put this one right on top. And just stick a pin in there. So as you can see, if you just leave it like this, it will, um, it'll just be bulky. It'll add bulk to it. So what I'm going to do is just kind of like follow this line. Let me grab something real quick. Okay, so I'm going to eyeball it. Um, I mean, you can as well. So you want to move it up about an inch, half an inch or so from the edge. So leave it here, right where it curves over under here. You wanna just follow this. And take it right up here so you'll see the little perforation holes right here I'm just going to kind of lightly sketch that out on each side and then fold it under and that's the size of my pocket uh, facing and pocket lining. That way, when you go to stitch it, it'll be out of the way. Very simple. Um, so we didn't mess with any of the dimensions up here, so you don't have to adjust anything. The pocket, the wall pocket is going to be the exact same width and length as the original. You're just moving it up and shortening the bag. Okay, so I have the fabric cut out. Now we wanna go ahead and cut the lining out. And something else I did in the event that you notice um, the pocket will be a little different. I ran out of fabric. Of course, I was using like the remnants of uh, the jeans that I had made. And so for my, um, and this is just like a really helpful tip tip if you run out of fabric so i'm just using because you won't be able to see this the pocket this this is going to be the inside of the pocket and you won't see this part but this is the fabric that i'm using for the lighting so it makes sense um, but you may see this part on the outside which is why this is an actual pattern piece and i just cut it 
I added a little extra for the seam allowance and I'm just going to stitch these two together and so when the jacket is constructed you'll only see this part okay so for the back lining I already folded it up and then I realized that I didn't record this part um, but this is the right back lining this pattern has a right back lining and a left back lining and the reason is you have that slit that's in the back and it's if you've never done one it's a little more um, detailed which is why the left side of the fab of the pattern is very different than the right side but you can throw that out you can either use the right side or the left side because up to this point, it's the same identical uh, pattern piece. But I'm using the right back lining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two pieces of just the right back lining. So again, if that was confusing, you can throw out the left back lining. You don't need to use that. Only use the right back lining. So only piece number 18. And so, what you do is, of course, it'll be a long piece. Just line up right under the armpit here. So, a couple things. I like to do my, and if you notice my tutorials with my lining, I like to, I don't necessarily do the baggy method. Um, only because a lot of times I end up making changes to my, um, to my garment after I've made it and especially for Chandler stuff. Um, so I don't do the baggy because I usually end up taking it out, taking some of the seam allowance out so that she can wear it longer. Um, so if you're doing that, you want to line this up here. And then you want to go up one inch. So you want to go up about an inch. So you want it to be an inch shorter than your actual fabric here. But I'm not doing it that way. So I'm just going to do it and match them up so that they'll be uh, the same length. So you want to do the same thing with the front lining. So once you determine how long this is going to be, the back lining piece is going to be, you want to do the same thing with the front. And you want to line that up right under here. And again, the same thing applies. If you're doing the baggy method, which the I believe the pattern calls for the baggy method, um, but I don't do that. Um, so I'm going to just stop right here. Again, if you're doing the baggy, you want to do one inch shorter. And I do believe that is it. Let's see. Yeah, there's only the two lining pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these two pieces out as well. Okay, so we have uh, the lining and the actual fabric all cut out, all the markings. And again, some of the only changes that we're making is the position of the pocket. We're going to change the uh, the back, the little plate part. What is this back called? There's an actual name for it. Um, overlay, they're calling it the back overlay. And instead of the two overlays in the front, I'm just going to do one for this pattern. And honestly, a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm using this, um, fabric that I literally have just like pieces of it. So I'm like stitching this stuff together. 
Okay, so for this back overlay, yours will not have a seam down the middle. Mine does because again, I ran out of a fabric. So I had to um, end up cutting two pieces as opposed to cutting on both. But I accounted for the extra fabric from cutting, uh, from not having it on the fold and the seam allowance. So don't worry about that. You won't see it anyway in the actual design. So what you're gonna do with the back here is you have the your markings here. So with the original pattern, this part was kind of like this. But we're not doing that. We're going to fold it inward. So mine is going to be a little easier because I have this seam down here. But you just want to see where this marking is and fold it over to the center. So prior to getting started, you might want to just find your center. So just fold it. And this will be your center. Just kind of stick a pin in where your center is. So you're going to take where this line here and then move it over to where your center meets. And then go ahead and pin this. And then do the other side the same way. Find your marking, fold it over to the center. And then go ahead and pin. Now base stitch this in place. Okay. Now you might just want to go ahead and iron this really well. So before I do that, what you also want to take, because there's another piece that I did put on the back of my uh, overlay. So what you want to do is put right sides together and you want to stitch this and leaving this side open and then turn it right side out. And once you turn it right side out, go ahead and press really well. Okay, so we have this pressed and we have this um, right side out. Now what you wanna do is just take this in and you want to stuff it in here just really neatly. All right, so once you do that, you wanna go ahead and give it another press and then top stitch all the way around. Okay, so we have everything nicely pressed and now what we wanna do, and top stitch. Now what you wanna do is you wanna measure down two inches. And at that point, you want to place this right at the, at the two inch mark. And you want to place it evenly across the back. And then go ahead and pin. That looks even, I think. Maybe it needs to go over a little. 
Now what you want to do is on top of this top stitching, you want to stitch here and here, making sure you don't, um, as long as the dimensions are correct, um, which is before you fold it over and, and stitch it, it's four by two. And this here is correct. Then you won't catch this part under here. So just go ahead and stitch top stitch right over those current top stitches there. And once you do that, um, then every other step is going to be noted in the other video. So there's no point in going over, you know, every step of this um, again. Again, there is only a few changes, probably the buttons. Um, I'm not going to put any buttons on the epaulets. I'm not going to put any buttons on the, um, the sleeves. And I'm still undecided if I'm going to add buttons to the front or if I'm going to do a zipper. I'm not sure yet, but I will come back once I construct the majority of the jacket. Okay, so we have everything constructed and I will just briefly go over some of the changes, even changes that I made as I was going through the process. Um, so we'll start with on the, the hack that I done for the adult um, cropped trench, I did two of these, one on each side. I decided only to do one on this side. Um, I removed the epaulets because Chandler wanted um, her, well, she wanted her complete name on, on the jacket and I was like, nope. So we ended up doing just a C. So I wanted to remove the epaulets. I didn't want, it just felt like it was too much. Um, so we did that. Um, also with the armbands. So the actual pattern and you can probably see it here. Um, it calls for to cut four pieces of the um, of the the armbands here. Instead of cutting four, what I did was I cut two and I added one inch to it, and I folded it in half, interfaced it, and then folded it in half. So I did that, and again, I left off the buttons. There, I left off buttons everywhere. I also ended up still putting this on the back. And of course, I lined it in this super cute little embroidered fabric um, that I just had my stash. It's really cute though. So what I'm going to do, um, and I also ended up uh, using this as a, just like as a little facing. It's makes it cute and if it flops up you can see that um you know i faced it with this as well all right so i am going to close this with a zipper and i'm going to do just like a little exposed zipper so she did try it on and she liked it without anything on it do i have something on here um without any type of closure um, but she did want the option to be able to um, zip it up. And because this is such a hard fabric, um, I know she would have a difficult time trying to button it. So we're going to just do this really quick. So I'm only going to do the zipper up to, th let's see, probably up to this point. And so you want to make sure at the bottom it's going to sit nice and flush and I already marked it. So I have these little markings just because I put it on her just to see where we made, uh, where we need to make the zipper sit. All right. So we're just going to put this here. How far? That's a little far over. Okay. 
So we're going to we're gonna do this. Uh, okay, so we're just gonna do it right here. And I don't want any of the extra zipper sticking out. So I'm going to mark it right here, which is where I'm going to end up cutting this off. And then we're gonna do this to the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this zipper. So the left side of the zipper is going to be attached to this side and this side is going to be attached here. I'm going to do two rows of stitching just so that it's a nice secure zipper and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side as well. All right, going to do that. Be right back. Okay, so we have the zipper installed and that is it. So again, um, if you want the detailed step-by-step -step, to go along with this uh, tutorial and the changes that I made to make a cropped version of my Nomi ME2070. I will make sure I link all that information down below. If you have any questions, comment to let me know. Happy sewing.